Hi, everybody. Welcome back to our special CUBE presentation. We're here in Seattle on the ground. I'm Dave Vellante with my co-host, Rob Stretchy. Good to see you, Rob. Good to see you, too. And we're super excited to have Jenny Troutman here. She's the Director of Training and Certification Products and Services at Amazon Web Services. Good to see you, Jenny. Thanks for, for coming on. Good to see you. Thanks for having me. So training products, interesting. Products and services. Tell us more about uh, those products and what services you offer. And we really want to get into what skills are in demand right now. Well, at AWS Training and Certification, our focus is really around skilling up the globe on cloud skills. So we help organizations, uh, large enterprises, all the way down to small businesses, make sure they have the skills they need within their company. We also help individuals looking for a job or looking to upskill and move into new, new roles, new positions to be able to build those skills. And we do it with kind of traditional classroom training like you might be used to when you were in school, but we also have a lot of self-paced, learn-as-you-go, game-based learning, all kinds of immersive experiences people can dive into to really build skills. And then we also have AWS certifications, which are industry-recognized credentials that help companies understand that you do have the skills and help people be able to show that they've learned. And are these a combination of for pay and some freebies, or is it? Yes, there is a mix of stuff. So we have hundred over 600 free courses online people can go and they can get kind of foundational, understand what cloud is, what it's all about, learn about different services, learn about the basics of AI. Um, and they can go all the way through to all of the learning they would need for our first foundational certification in cloud. But then there are uh, low cost options that we have to be able to get hands on and really get experience building and then get the certification. Yeah, it would seem like there's, and we hear it all the time, that there's a skills gap. And I, I know, you know, Personally, as we were talking beforehand, my wife went through the training and got her certification. Yay. Uh, and, uh, you know, companies are looking to understand that what, what skills gaps are you seeing that you're trying to really, you know, hone in on and fill those gaps and bring people's knowledge forward? Yes. Well, when we think about cloud skills, every year, 5 million jobs go unfilled. And that's really just from having a lack of skilled professionals in the workforce. So when we talk about um, skills, we're talking about all cloud skills. But lately, with the pace of change that we've seen with AI, with um, generative AI becoming kind of main, mainstream and people being able to use it in their day to day, now those kind of emerging skills are becoming more and more top of mind. And so when we think about skilling people up, we, we go all the way from what are the basics of cloud core technologies all the way through to kind of the deepest um, most technical learners and being able to kind of day to day build the models that are powering those applications. You know, my former boss, Rob Pat McGovern, they he, one of the tenets of the organization was they would carve out ten percent of the profits for training, invest in your people through training. If you wanted to get training, it was a no brainer to get it approved, it, as long as it was sort of relevant. And of course, at AWS, it's it's compulsory. You learn how to you know spin up S three buckets and, and the like, but the. I don't know what your guys' experience is with other companies. Are companies investing enough in training, in your view, or is there, or is there a gap? So I would say there's a gap. So we work with companies, and there are companies who have gone all in, and they build out kind of comprehensive plans, and they continue to build the skills of their workforces. And what they find is those companies are building a competitive advantage. They're able to maintain their workforce. They're able to keep people engaged. They're able to grow them. Um, and they're seeing the, the results in their pace of innovation. But we, we do also see the companies that are not seeing investing in skills as being core, core to investing in their business are struggling to keep up. And those are the companies that are struggling with their cloud migrations. They're, they're falling behind in their product innovation. And that's where we're really trying to help company, companies understand that that investment in skills really is their investment in the business. Yeah, it would, it would seem like, especially as you said, with the changing uh, dynamics of organizations with Gen AI and AI and these yet another set of uh, services that have come out and, they, and you know now I think we're over 300 years so it's, it's hard to keep up it's hard to keep up <laughs> and and I think how do you see that really changing the narrative for these organizations as they're leaning in because it's not only the technical folks it's the non-technical folks also that need to understand Gen AI and how it you know what does the architecture look like because, and we, we'll talk about this in another segment around, you know, responsible AI and, you know, bias and all these other things that are not necessarily technical or stuff that you're programming in there. 
Yeah, so we think about it really across three things. One is everybody needs to have what we call cloud fluency. Cloud is its own language. And for, you know, finance needs to understand what's the difference in the financial models. Marketing needs to understand the difference in how it helps them innovate. So, you know, across the business, everyone needs to understand the language. And then you, of course, have the deep technologists who who need to go deeper into the areas wherever they're specialized, security, software developers, whatever it is. And then the last thing now that has become uh, kind of big lately is what we're seeing is with generative AI, there's all these new tools coming out. People can't even imagine how their job could change in the future. And the people who, one, are very curious and choose to kind of keep track of what's going on and try and stay ahead of it and try these new things as they come out, um, and two, understand and learn how to use these tools, they're able to really excel in their roles because they're able to get ahead of it and, and keep learning and stay ahead. And that's really what we see of um, kind of the power of this AI where people can now have it at their fingertips. We've always had it, right? It's been around for like 20 years, but it wasn't at your fingertips. And now that it's at people's fingertips to be able to use it on their day-to-day, -day, it's being able to figure out how. And that's that's a big part of the learning now is understand what's possible with it and what tools are available for people to continue to to innovate themselves. Let's talk a little bit about diversity. It's a hot topic, obviously. Um, I think women in tech, that number is sort of stuck at you know maybe 15, 17% of the tech industry are, are women. Uh, but every large tech company anyway is focused on this issue. Uh, I don't know what the stats are for people of color and you know other diversity statistics, but the question is what role does training, you know, generally and in, in AWS training specifically play in fostering, you know, a more inclusive culture? So we, one of our big kind of taglines is we believe the future of tech is diverse. We say that uh, in training and certification all the time. And because of that, in order to be able to drive that diversity, we made a commitment to provide free skills training across the globe to anyone that wants it. Because a lot of the challenges with getting the diverse workforce is access. And access can be can mean a lot of different things. It can be the timing. You know, I can't do it because I'm working all day and I have kids in the evening. And when am I going to, you know, I have to be able to do it in the time that I have that narrow window right after the kids go to bed. Or it could be that you're in a location where there's not a lot of, of local access to learning. And so we provide free skills to people across the globe. We made a commitment in 2020 to to train 29 million people for free by 2025. And I'm very proud to say that earlier this year, we had already uh, achieved over 31 million. So that has been, and we will continue to invest. That has been a big focus for us. And now our latest commitment was on AI skills. And we said, we we're gonna train at least 2 million people by next year across the globe on free AI skills. And we wanna continue to grow that. We hoped that that would be a very conservative number and we would reach a lot more people because frankly, the, the whole point of all of these tools and all of this access to education is that anybody can have it and the globe is diverse. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I think to me that that actually that forward looking aspect of it and what skill sets are going to be required for the next five to 10 years. What are you seeing at, from that and how the job market is, you know, kind of transforming and how you're bringing new criteria out to help them and educate them for that? Yeah, you know, the question I often get is um, people are afraid, you know, jobs are going to go away with AI. And what we've seen is there probably will be changes in jobs, um, but really we actually expect there's going to be a lot of new jobs. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to help people imagine what's possible and, and, and start to create those new jobs. And so um, I would say that we are very focused on helping people understand the opportunity. We did a study um, with a partner who found that in existing jobs, people with AI skills can earn up to 47% more in salary. The, it's a massive wage premium. And that's technologists. But even when you look at jobs like sales, marketing, HR, legal, there's wage premiums anywhere from 35 to 42 percent in those as well. So I would say knowing <laughs> what's possible, knowing what's out there, and then developing those skills, it's pretty compelling right now. It's going to become, by the way, table stakes. So I would say do it now where there's a premium. <laughs> I mean, machines have always replaced humans over the course of history, and there's always been more jobs. Um, this is the first time it's been really cognitive, uh, but there's no reason to believe that it won't happen again, but I'd like to dig into you know, Gen AI specifically. 
Um, what kinds of training are you seeing people take with Gen AI? What are you recommending? Is it like prompt engineering or is it how to apply Gen AI? Yeah, so we definitely look at it by the role. So one is we have a whole series on Gen AI for executives. Mm -hmm. And that's really about what's possible, how to think about what's possible for your business, and then how to think about getting your organization ready for AI, how to get started with a project. What does that look like? So that's one, one track. Then another is if you think about software development, developers in other areas, prompt engineering is definitely a skill that is critical. Uh, it sounds simple, <laughs> but you do the wrong prompt and you do not get what you want and, and all of that productivity goes out the window. So learning prompt engineering is key. But another is even thinking about, for example, marketing. A marketer, if you think about it, is trying to figure out where to invest, say, geographically. They would go and they would ask for some reports. Right? They'd get these reports. It might take a couple weeks. They come back and the reports are showing them, I don't know, maybe the German market. And they look at it and they're like, huh, that seems really compelling. But what about Israel? How does it compare? Oh, no, I got to go get some more reports. And you keep doing this. You keep digging deeper and deeper. And it's taking weeks. And you still haven't made this decision on where you're going to invest. Now with these, there are BI tools that they can do that in five minutes. You can sit there and you can say, now, now show me this. Now show me this. And you can make in that hour meeting that you're having your investment decision that would have taken months. So it really can accelerate that pace of growth for the And it's not static either. I mean, I remember when you first started doing search on the internet, you had to put plus signs in and you had to spell things correctly. So it's, it's, it's an ongoing capability that the AI is going to deliver. And we're going to, I'm sure, figure out ways to use it in, in new ways. So the training presumably has to evolve with the, the, the capabilities of the AI. I will say that is the hardest part. Yes, it is constantly evolving. Um, and that is why we have uh, such a broad portfolio, because we're constantly finding new areas to introduce the, the tools. If we think about the AWS technologies, Amazon Q just keeps changing. So we're in lockstep with those service teams to keep changing what the content is and letting people know, hey, you got to keep learning <laughs> because if you learn it now, and the technology changes, it didn't, you know, and you didn't keep up, you're kind of falling behind again. And so we do very much encourage continuous learning. That's why we encourage so much online self-paced immersive experience, because you keep coming back and you're going to get the latest information and you're going to get the experience hands-on to be able to use it in your real world. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. And have, have you seen that? Because a lot of, a lot of the uh, large language models have obviously been, you know, everything that's public on the internet, which includes all of the APIs for HWS and things of that nature. Have you seen that people are looking to understand how they actually use Gen AI and have training to use Gen AI in their day-to-day -day jobs? In Like, hey, I'm, I'm using this, I'm doing EC2 stuff, and I want to, you know, do some Kubernetes now with EKS or something like that. Is that kind of some of the requests you're getting is cross- more solution oriented versus actual yeah. just services oriented. Yeah, we are definitely getting that. And in fact, the training, the what we're building now, the, the training solutions we're building are to be adaptable for exactly that reason. So we, we actually just came out with something called Simularn, AWS Simularn. And what it is, is it gives you a simulation. So say you're a solution architect, it gives you a customer situation. You now are interacting with it. You have to ask questions like you would in an actual customer meeting. You get scored on how well, how good your questions are, how you communicate. You have to build the solution and you have to keep adapting the solution based on the feedback that you're getting, the AI powered solution uh, feedback you're getting all the way through. And, there, and we need to do that because, not only because that's a great way to learn, but also because the content is constantly changing and we need it to be bite sized. So we can, as we make bite sized content, we can adjust the, what's happening in the simulation, right, to keep up with the pace of change. You know, there's so much, <laughs> the media always goes to the negative. We think about AI is going to affect jobs. You know, it's going to take over the world with, with AGI. Um, but I find that I don't want to be dumber. I mean, AI makes me smarter, so I don't want to go backwards. But it's Eric Schmidt this week, uh, there was a story. I don't know if you saw this. It's quite interesting. Um, he basically said, look, we've got to let AI go. And the, the whole negative around uh, carbon emissions, you know, because AI does take a lot of, of energy. His point was AI is going to help us maybe find new ways to take carbon out of the atmosphere. I hadn't thought of it. That was a really interesting way to sort of flip the narrative. And so my question is, is do you think training and education can help flip that narrative? I don't know if I understand. 
I mean, the negative narrative around. Oh, the, the ne- yes, I do. Because I actually think, in fact, this is what we're, we're trying to do with, with our training itself mm-hmm. is to make it so adaptive and so ability to customize to what you need that you can learn exactly what you need, exactly when you need to. And we've never had that ability before. We have to have AI to power that. And I agree. I think it gives, it shows people the power of being able to um, make things easier for you, make your life better. We think about the efficiency of learning. I know that sounds weird, but like, how do you get people to learn exactly what they need as fast as possible? And we're able to finally do more with that now that we have AI powered solutions. When you sit in a classroom, everybody's got to learn at the same pace. There's no ability to do that. When you can be on your own and you can have the ability to adapt the training, that's when you can get it just what you need. Do you have a, like a specific recommendation or a call to action to executives in in this topic? Where, where should where should they start? What should they focus on? What should they do next? Yeah, I would say start by recognizing that you have to invest in your workforce. <laughs> These wage premiums are there because we don't have people with the skills, and so you you need to recognize that you have the people you need, and you have to invest in developing them and continuing to develop them. Uh, and I think that's the starting point. And then it, it can't just stop with, oh, okay, I have a budget for this year, <laughs> right? It has to be thinking about how you use that as your competitive advantage to build your organization and grow it over time and stay ahead of ahead of the industry. Where can people get more info? On- so AWS Skill Builder is where you can find all of the online learning and you can also find information about all of our training. Check it out. Sharpen those skills. Jenny, thanks so much for coming to the Cube. Appreciate it. Thank you. It was great. Okay, Dave Vellante for Rob Stretchy. Keep it right there for these Cube conversations. We're going wall to wall. We're here on the ground in Seattle. Right back.